Hi, so we've been doing quite a bit of stuff actually on rocket stoves and I was thinking that it was going to get lost so I've made it in its own playlist and, and that's where you'll see it so if you're interested in the stuff we've been doing on rocket stove and rocket stove generation it's all in the rocket stove playlist but I thought I'd do a little bit about what we've been doing to give it a framework so that it doesn't become a confusing mess because very often when you go down some of these rabbit holes without a framework you think hang on a sec what's happening here so what we're doing, or rather what we began by doing, was looking at rocket stoves because I've heard that they're marvellous things and I wanted to see for myself. So I built a couple of rocket stoves and here's the camping rocket stove that we made. And sure enough, it worked really well, actually. And you can take things like that and turn them into mass heaters. You basically surround it by a lot of mass and heat up that mass. Things like bricks, that sort of stuff, lumps of concrete, uh, vermiculite is often used. But you can heat up a big lump of something. So when this isn't burning, that big lump of what you've heated can, of course, just give that heat out. So one awesome use of rocket stoves is as a heating system, and you find them being built as heating systems. And there's lots and lots of examples of rocket stoves and mass rocket heaters being used for camping, cooking, uh, heating, all kinds of stuff. And it's awesome, and I really enjoyed looking at those, and I'm probably going to explore some of those as we go along. But my own particular bent, as you know, really is in energy generation and energy storage. That's what I'm very interested in. So I was looking at this and thinking about the efficiency of its burn and could that be made into a way to generate? Now, whenever you do something like that, people have their own particular favourites about things and they have their own favourites for very good reasons. And those things can be in conflict with each other. And of course, the reasons they give are always very good reasons. But the truth is, people just have their favourites. And when it comes to favourites, then there's lots of reasons. One might be that um, you, you want something with no moving parts that's technologically easy to make and it's very valid, in which case stick a load of Peltier devices on it. You might want something that's extremely cheap to make but would be, um, might be not put out as much but still do a job, which is why you would see things like a Stirling engine on it that was home built maybe. Now bear in mind Stirlings are very good, so Stirling has a great deal of possibility in generation, but simple Stirling engines that are homemade can give out electrical energy of roughly the same efficiencies as a Peltier. Because a Peltier, remember it's only 3 to 8 percent of efficient, so you don't have a huge target to beat sticking a load of Peltiers on there. If you build something that is a heat exchange engine, then you're going to get generation to some level. And we've been looking at the possibility of um, Stirlings, the straightforward Stirling, then of course developments on that, things like the fluid iron and thermal lag. They're engines to extract the heat and convert that into electricity. Because there are also um, solid state methods, and we've looked at a couple of solid state methods. We've looked at um, utilizing Seaback effect and thermopiles, that was with this thing here. And then we've looked at MHD generation, which is very similar to standard generation, which is this thing here. So we've been looking at different styles of generation because different people have different needs and different things that they like. The answer really is, what is it that you like and that you would want to focus on? And to be a bit more open-minded, obviously, about the possible alternatives that there are that you might want to be looking at and thinking about. Now, there aren't um, sort of do this, do this, do this recipes, but there are ideas to be able to do something. Now, my own particular bent is things that are cheap and easy to make and can be made easily in anywhere in the world to produce a sufficient amount of energy. That's my particular bent. It's what I find fascinating and what I want to look at. But that doesn't mean that all of those other ways that you could do this are invalid. They're not. There's a huge amount of ways that you could possibly approach this, depending on your skills, your tools, your particular bent. I mean, one thing would be wrap a coil of copper around here turn it into a flash boiler, run a steam engine. Why not? It's a brilliant idea. It takes a fair bit of engineering to do something like that, but that idea is awesome. Another idea, like we say, is we're investigating is strapping a sterling onto it. And then there are different kinds of sterlings we might strap onto it. Other ideas are solid state generation that we've looked at. Maybe Peltier devices, maybe this uh, thermopile that we constructed. Other ideas are things like standard generation, where we use something like an MHD. Other ideas are just use the heat that comes off and stick a fan in there and get that to turn a generator. There's just a whole host of ideas that can be used that depend on 
what you like, what your objectives are, what your skill level is, what you have available to you, and what you want to achieve with it in terms of efficiency. So that's why we're looking at all those different methodologies of what we um, could possibly do with the rocket stove. And that's where I began with the rocket stove, was just looking at the basic rocket stove then asking questions about how it could be made to generate, and then what constraints there are that I want to impose on that generation for my own particular objectives. So all of that is what we've been up to in the rocket stove, and the rocket stove I've collected together now in the rocket stove playlist to give um, a single point to go to. And then that's this, what I've um, just said, obviously, is all about the framework of the work that we're actually doing. And we'll be um, going back to Sterling Engines because that's my particular bent. But I wanted to explore it further about what might possibly be done with this if you were looking for something that would more suit your particular bent. Anyway, I hope the video helps understand what it is we've been up to. I hope it gives a framework to uh, the Rocket Stove and the Rocket Stove projects. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you want a bit more humour, jump over to TNT. And if you want a bit more depth, think about being a member.